Hello you lovely cubs, it's the Dragon Lord here back again with another video. Now today we are doing What If Luffy Had the Rinnegan Part 2. Of course this is the redo part 2, not the original one like you all know. Anyway, there's not much to say. Like and subscribe if you're new around here and if you enjoy this type of content. Part 3 will have a like goal as well. I'm setting it to 50 likes. You guys will probably smash that. Anyway, join the Discord. Why haven't you? It's a good Discord. Just saying. And also join the Roblox group. And for the rest, let's get into it. Luffy and Zoro were sailing. They were pretty much lost as they didn't know where they were going. Their stomachs growled and they had just run out of provisions. At that moment, Luffy spotted a bird in the sky. Bancho Tenin. Luffy would say as the bird started getting closer to the bo boat. It got bigger and bigger. The bird was about half the size of the boat. As it got close, Zoro got it in a sword stance, and in, in an instant, he cut up the bird. They cooked it up and ate it. It wasn't the best, but Luffy's cooking skills weren't that bad. He learned a lot from the mountain bandits and his brothers. We'll need to get a cook, 100%, Luffy said with a massive smile on his face. Well, how about we get a navigator first, Zoro responded, pointing at the ocean. If we move in the direction that bird was going, we will probably find land, right? Zoro said, however, Luffy was still stuffing his face with food. They proceeded to just go into the direction the bird was going. Eventually, they ran into some pirates that were floating in the water. Luffy let them get on board, but they didn't even try anything as they recognized Luffy's face. With the pirates on board, they'd start rowing. They had a sail, but the winds weren't as strong at that moment, so the pirates started rowing. They started talking to Zoro and Luffy. Apparently, they were returning from successfully plundering a ship when they came across a small boat drifting in the ocean with a female passenger on board. She asked for some food and water and offered a treasure chest as payment. They decided to check the chest first, only to find it empty and the girl had stolen their boat. A sudden maelstrom had appeared and sank the small boat along with the pirates, while the girl waved goodbye as she drove off with their boat. After a few hours of sailing, they arrived at a dock. The dock seems pretty small, but it also looks to be abandoned. They dock their ship and the buggy pirates run off. Zoro and Luffy start walking through town to figure out where everybody is, but it seems to be pretty empty. Whilst walking, they stumble across an alleyway. They pretty much walk in past it, but whilst they do so, a girl who's running out of the alley bumps into Luffy. She seems to be pretty exhausted from running, perhaps. Luffy notices a few cuts on her. At that moment, pirates come out from the alley. They point their swords at Luffy and demand he hand over the girl. She looks at Luffy with a terrified look. The pirates, however, pass out. Luffy had used his conqueror's hockey to knock them out. Zoro, who was watching, trembled a bit. This was the power of his captain, eh? Interesting. Luffy took the girl inside a house and laid her in a bed. She must have been running for a while. They stay by her side for an hour until she wakes up again. She starts explaining that she stole from those pirates. When asked what she stole, she reveals it to be a map of the Grand Line. Lucy Luffy asks if she is a navigator, to which she replies she is. He asks her to join his crew. As if I team up with pirates. After she said this, she recognized Luffy and Zoro though. She got a bit scared. Luffy realized that and they got up. Well, if we can't convince you, so be it. Let's go, Zoro. Luffy said as they exited the house. She was a bit astonished at his kindness. After all, he didn't force her to join like most pirates would. He respected her wishes. She decided to follow them. Now Luffy was well aware that she was following, but he didn't mind. He made his way through town and ended up stumbling upon a dog. The closer they got, the more the dog 
barked. A man would start running up to them, telling them to flee. He came to a stop now. The dog stopped barking when the man was there. He was breathing heavily. You have to get out of here, or you'll die, the man said as he was still catching his breath. What's up, old man? Zoro said, intrigued by what he meant. A buggy ball is about to be shot. It will destroy this entire area. The man said as he tried picking up the dog, but the dog would just bark at the man as it didn't want to move. Why is the dog acting like that? Luffy asked. To his surprise, the man started tearing up. It's waiting for its owner to come back, after being left here to protect the pet food shop. The man said as he finally got a look at the men he was talking to. I'm the mayor of this town, Boodle, the man spoke. At that moment, loud noises could be heard. Looking over, an object was flying towards their direction at high speed, causing massive destruction. When it was about to hit them, it stopped midair. Boodle looked at it surprised, as he looked over to Luffy, who had his hand raised. Shinra Tensei, Luffy said as the ball flew back in the direction it came from, at way higher speed. After about four seconds, a loud crash could be heard. What did you just do? Boodle asked, confused. I sent the attack back to them, Luffy said with a smile. Luffy saw that Choo Choo, the dog that was protecting the pet food shop, was practically starving. He pulled out a piece of meat he had hidden in his jacket, and put it on the floor for the dog, as he started walking in the direction the ball came from. Zoro followed him silently. Nami, who was still watching, was terrified at Luffy's strength, but intrigued nonetheless, so she followed him. About ten minutes of walking, they stopped. In front of them stood 30 to 40 pirates, leading them were a man on a unicycle and a man who was sitting on a massive lion. One of the men yelled, charge, as they all rushed at them. Again, all of the weak-looking pirates passed out. Nami and Zoro both looked at Luffy, confused about what he did. Richie, what's wrong? The man on the line said as his line was running rampant, almost as if it was scared of something. When Luffy got closer, the lion bowed its head down as if to show not to fight with him. The man on the line jumped off and decided to attack Luffy like that. However, he got sent flying into a building, which knocked him out instantly. Zoro, I'll leave the other one to you, alright? Luffy said as he walked forward. The man rushed at Luffy, but Zoro intercepted and their fight began. Luffy kept on walking, with Nami still following him. Luffy ended up coming to a stop in front of a big yellow building that was collapsing in on itself. A man stood in front of it. He had a clown nose, but he was looking down. Well, 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 seems like you, the, ma the man was saying as he looked up. His face turned pale as he saw Luffy's face. Uh, I see you're that kid with the 600 million bounty, Buggy said, a bit of tremble within his voice. Oh yeah, anyway, I'm gonna beat you up, Luffy said as he got closer. I don't think I've offended you in any way, have I? Buggy said as he was preparing to sneak attack on Luffy. Well, no, but you laid waste to this town, and I don't like that very much, Luffy said as he grabbed Buggy's hand. He had tried attacking Luffy from behind using his floating hand. Luffy got sent flying upwards as he held onto Buggy's hand. He let go, however, and crashed down onto the ground. Buggy's hand came back to stab him again, however, Luffy just waved his hand, making the hand crash into the ground at high speed, actually hurting Buggy. Buggy got aggravated and rushed at Luffy, however, Luffy just punched Buggy in the gut, knocking him out. Nami simply stood there without knowing anything, or knowing what to say. Come, he said as he looked right at her. She didn't know how he knew she was there, but for her own safety, she followed. After following for a bit, they'd arrive at Buggy's treasure room. Luffy quickly used his pseudo-telekinesis to put all the gold and belly into four bags, each holding 2.5 million. He'd hand a bag to Nami. She just looked confused. You steal from pirates for a reason, right? So take it. You were planning to take it anyway, Luffy said as he had a sort of precognition. She just took the bag and followed him out. Before them stood a buggy who was slowly getting back up. Damn you, he said as he rushed towards Luffy. Luffy dropped the three bags he was carrying. He stretched his hands back, scaring Nami. Gomu gomu no bazooka, Luffy said as he hit Buggy, not only knocking him out, but also sending him flying. Luffy picked his bags up and 
He walked back towards where Zoro was. When they arrived, they saw that Zoro was simply sleeping next to Choo Choo. I'm guessing he took care of the other guy, Luffy asked, looking at Boodle. Uh, yeah, he beat him easily, the man said as he asked another question. What happened? I beat Buggy. He won't be a problem for you anymore, Luffy said with a smile as he woke Zoro up. Zoro asked if they were going, and Luffy answered yes. The townspeople came back as Boodle was on his knees thanking Luffy. Luffy dropped two bags of the treasure that he had taken from Buggy. Use that to rebuild your town, he said, leaving before anybody could say anything. Him and Zoro boarded their boat. Nami's boat was stationed nearby. Hey, listen, about me becoming your navigator, is that still an option? She asked Luffy with a sincere look. Yeah, why? Luffy asked, confused. I'll join you as a temporary navigator, if you promise to fulfill a favor of mine later on. Sure, Luffy said before she could continue. He had a massive smile on his face as she boarded their ship. She attached her own to the back of theirs, making it so they had another ship for storage. Before they could depart, the townspeople arrived, and handed them some bags of rations and supplies. Luffy thanked them, and they set off to their next island. A few days of sailing later, they'd arrive at a small island, when docking their boat near the beach. They would get off and get on the beach, where they got surrounded. A voice would speak, announcing himself as the mighty Usopp, who claims himself to be captain of the Usopp pirates. Luffy simply unleashed a bit of conqueror's hockey. This scared Usopp, who realized that they were real pirates, and that they weren't deceived by his plan. They were there for supplies and, potent and a potential new ship. Usopp ends up following them as they go into town, talking with them along the way. They end up figuring out that Usopp is the son of Yasop, a member of Shanks' crew. Luffy laughs and asks if Usopp would like to join their crew. Oi, Luffy, you can't be serious, right? Zoro would say. Yeah, sure, this Usopp guy was kind of funny, but what use would he have in battle, right? However, his doubts changed when Luffy gave him a reassuring look. So, Usopp, are you a skilled sniper as your father? Luffy asked, remembering Yasop, who was insanely skilled at using guns. Usopp smirked. Of course, I might even be better than him, he said, fabricating a lie. Let's see your skills then, Luffy would say as he walked away, putting a can on top of his head. Luffy was well over 40 meters away from Usopp at this point. What a joke, Usopp would say as he pulled out his slingshot. Zoro laughed at the sight, however Usopp easily hit the can as he smiled. Perfect, join my crew, Luffy would say, approaching Usopp. I can't, at least not right now, Usopp said as he looked at a direction. In the direction, Luffy saw a mansion. Using his ocular prowess, he'd take a closer look, and then he noticed something. Oh, let's go, Luffy said as he started walking in the direction. They arrived at the mansion, although Usopp tried to stop them. Luffy opened the gate without even touching it, surprising Usopp. They'd knock on the door of the mansion. A man with glasses would open the door. He'd see Usopp and get angry, however, when he saw Luffy, he panicked a bit. Move, Luffy would say as he entered. Klahador wasn't able to move for a moment, but before he knew it, everybody had already entered. He started running towards Kaya's bedroom, however, when he arrived, he'd see her walking around perfectly healthy. Isn't this amazing, Clahador? Look, I'm healed. This man with the straw hat, he healed me, she would say as, he, as she danced around out of happiness, as she ended up running to Usopp and hugged him, as she thanked him under her breath. You don't have to thank me, I simply used my abilities to restore your body to its natural state, Luffy said. When Luffy healed her, he had summoned a massive demon-looking monster which had swallowed Kaya. But when she came out, she was completely healed. At first, Usopp was very angry at Luffy, but after seeing his f friend being healed, he couldn't be happier. That's a great, miss, but how are we certain that you are completely healed? This could just be a trick. After all, that man is a pirate with a bounty over 600 million, Clahador would say as he acted like he wanted to protect her. The bounty being brought up surprised Usopp and everybody in the room. 600 million, that over that, that's insane. Of course, Nami and Zoro weren't surprised, but Kaya and Usopp definitely were. But 
Well, it all changed rather quickly as Luffy sent him flying back a bit. He didn't use too much force, just enough to get him away from her. Kaya was your name, right? You weren't sick, you were poisoned, Luffy said as he clenched his fist. Before Kaya could say anything, Klahador would run away and out of the mansion. That man, he must have been poisoning you for a while now, Luffy said as he slowly made his exit. Wait, how did you know? Usopp asked curiously. Her energy was disrupted. You won't understand, also, if you want to become an even more brave adventurer of the sea, take a moment to take in your surroundings. Feel everything, and you will surely become stronger, Luffy would say as he left. Usopp didn't understand at this point, at that moment they heard somebody scream. Pirates, outside of the mansion. It was one of the children who followed Usopp around. Luffy and the crew would follow the kid. Usopp and Kaya joined them. They ended up arriving at the beach where the kid led them to. There they see a distressed Clahador who is actually a pirate named Kuro. What's the problem? Some kids get in your way? Come on, we'll just kill them all. A man with a hat and glasses said. The plan was simple. Kill the girl, inherit her money, but some pirates interfered. We have to leave this instant. Come on now, Kuro. How bad of a problem could a few kids be? The man said as he and started laughing. Clahador! Kaya screamed. The men looked up. Now nah, that is quite the problem indeed. The man said as he ordered everyone to get back on the ship in that instant. However, their ship got destroyed by a giant fist. Looking back, they'd see Luffy, whose fist had become massive and had smashed their ship. His fist turned back to normal, but everyone there was shocked at this sudden attack. Go on. Luffy said. Kaya vented her anger. All those times that Usopp had warned her about how shady Clahador was, and he simply called Usopp an idiot. All those times she lied to her just for personal gain. She was sick of it. She yelled out at Clahador and his crew, who couldn't do anything but listen. What does it matter, Kuro would say as he had donned his cat claw gloves. In an instant he rushed at Kaya. If he couldn't kill Luffy or the Straw Hats, he'd at least take her out. He yelled out to his men to attack. However, before being able to hit Kaya, he'd get hit by a small explosive blast. It disoriented him a bit. From now on, I'm a pirate, Usopp yelled out. He had just hit Clahador. Childish games. Kuro said as he used his near impossible to detect stealth mode. However, he got hit again. By Usopp. Usopp put all of his focus on Clahodor. The wind, anything that changed, he'd attack it. Oi, Zoro, take care of those crew down there, Luffy would say with a massive smile. By myself? All of them? Zoro said as it was easily 60 men, including two weird cat people and Django. Yep, use this fight to grow. Luffy said as he simply sat down. Nami was worried about her treasure, but she was reassured by Luffy. The fight between Zoro and the crew lasted two hours, but Zoro ended up coming out victorious. He was badly wounded, but Luffy would simply summon that demon-like monster again, and Zoro came out good as new. He felt stronger, yet he couldn't describe how. The fight between Kuro and Usopp lasted three hours, however. Kuro was passed out from the accumulated damage, and Usopp was severely exhausted. He cried out in happiness, though. He had become stronger, even if it was just a little bit. From now on, I'll be teaching you guys things that I know. I'm obviously not as skilled as you guys um, in your own fields, but I know a thing or two which could help you. Luffy would say as he started laughing. Clahador and the rest of the pirates got captured. A marine ship would arrive in two days to get them. The day after, Mary would have returned. Kaya explained everything to him. He thanked the young pirates and invited them for dinner. They got given three million belly as a reward, as well as Mary's ship, the Going Mary. Luffy had a huge smile on his face. They transported all of their old resources and materials onto the ship, and they dismantled part of their old ship for resources. This was critical thinking by Luffy, which nobody in his crew really anticipated. Nami was very happy as Luffy assigned her to be the crew's funds manager. Anything that the crew found that wasn't specifically hers would be split equally as investments. She was simply happy to be working with their money after all. They had stolen 10 million from the Kuro pirates, making their total to be around 20 million belly if she added her own 2.5 million.
The crew let Usopp say his goodbyes. When he boarded, he waved goodbye as they set sail. The next day, marines would arrive to capture Kuro and his crew. When asked about the pirate that defeated them, Kaya simply said Usopp and Monkey D. Luffy. The Navy commander at the time didn't know who she meant, but when he arrived back at HQ, he was stunned. Instantly, they issued bounties for these people. After sailing for a week, Luffy and the others would receive mail. In the mail were bounties, one being Usopp at 16 million berries, one being a pirate named Arlong, and when Nami saw this, she tensed up, and Luffy made note of this. And the other was his own, now being 660 million belly. The crew laughed it off as they continued their journey. But that journey will be for the next part. So I hope you guys enjoyed this what if. It's a bit of a shorter one for a One Piece what if, but I've decided that I'm doing max two arcs and I didn't want to bore you guys too much with too many information. That's why um, the arc of Usopp's village, it sounds like it's all happening in one day, but it's actually multiple days. It's just I didn't want to write that out and make you guys confused. So yeah, them confronting Kuro is actually on their second day being on the island. So that's just to clear that up. I just didn't write that in the script. If you like today's part though, do like and subscribe. As I said, 50 likes and I will put part 3 up. And uh, with that said, do join the Discord because we're growing it out. And you know we're being more active in it than we were in the past. Also join the Roblox group. I already said that, but whatever, just join it. It's a good group. <laughs> good merch coming soon. Anyway, hope you lovely cubs have a lovely day. My name is the Dragon Lord, and I am signing out.